Hello. Hello. Now, welcome to Rare Whiskey Friday, where we're going to sample several different whiskeys. <laughs> Sometimes they're large brands, but more often than not, they're craft distilleries without a large distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in an area where you can get your hands on one of these bottles, you're welcome for the review. And thank you to the magnificent bastard who sent it in. <laughs> <laughs> I could have done that the whole time, I guess. Okay, so here's the thing. Wait, I had things. Yeah, wait, wait. Here's the problem. No, like, really, I had things. You had, no, your, like, sunglasses? No, they're over there. Oh, it's right here. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> Compose myself. We've got a stash of Stein whiskey from William Shepard, the Titan. But a couple of the bottles we already have, so he's like a benevolent Titan. You benevolent Titan of yeah, whiskey. Yeah, but it's like, it was like, if I didn't do them all today, we were just gonna be drinking Stein for Daniel, do we distance, do you hear that? Yes, it's the guy who really likes Stein whiskey. Magnificent bastards. What do, I don't know how to do this in no order, but hang on here. Hold. Stein Distillery is in Oregon. They had a couple locations. They opened up a location in Beaverton, something like Lake Oswego and Joseph, Oregon. And they're like winning awards. They're using farm grain. They're making their own sh um, but when you go look up information on their whiskey, it doesn't tell you anything that's not already on the bottle. Now, we've already done their rye and their um, bourbon, but he sent those again. But he also sent us the five-year-old rye and the blended, straight blended whiskeys. This is quite the collection. Right? Good Lord. And this isn't even all of them. Other people have also sent Stein, but... This is seven-year-old corn whiskey. Oh, interesting. Now, corn whiskey is one of these. I'm looking at this and thinking my day is probably shot now. I had writing to do. I had editing to do. And I guess this is the only shooting I had to do today. Look, I'm diving in. Are you? I'm guns a blazing. <laughs> okay, let's pour the, let's, what did you get first? The bourbon. Okay, let's start with the bourbon as like a place where we've already done their bourbon, but we haven't done their five-year-old bourbon. I'm gonna pour us both of this, and we're gonna do legitimate first impression, dump, rinse, move on to the next one. All right, this is five-year-old straight bourbon from Stein. This is barrel 299, proof down to 40. Woo, there's that slight it's pine that, green. Uh, that craft piney. Yeah. That is, uh, oh, yeah. and there's like a, Oh no. There's like a like a minty granola back there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, minty granola behind that pine note. I've never would have put together mint and granola, but, but it's it definitely there. is here. Yeah. What are you looking for? Well, somebody cleaned up the vault and moved my knife. The one knife I kept down there specifically to be underneath there. When they did tours, they cleaned up and did us a favor. And, and then you get in there deeper. You know what is interesting? The, it, the nose does develop the more you go back to it. It evolves, it changes every moment. The pine isn't totally subsiding though. It no, still that stays was, that funny. Was a, that was immediately the front first big note you got. And the more you keep going back, keep going back, it's still there, but it starts to give way to these other notes, that granola. There's a little bit of like a dry cherry element in there. Sons of all the bitches. I found a monocle. 
And then there's, yeah. It's like, uh, it's a little, it's a little, the, the nose is more present than the taste. Was this like 40%? Yeah. Yep, 40%. They're all, eh. I know, there's just no, there's no knife, there's no easy way to get this correctly. You know how many people sit knives? I know, and I kept one down here, but we're not the only people in this vault, and people evidently thought that cleaning up the pocket knife that was underneath this thing was doing us a favor. And the one in my pocket is currently sitting on my dresser. I'm just gonna wait. There's the next one. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna try a sip of this real quick. Mm hmm. Mm. It's really dry and kind of thin. Well, it's the 40% thinness. It's that 40% thinness. But the, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the notes that are still there on the relatively... You got the monocle? Found one over there in the corner. Let's see if it, this is... You ever, the next one is... Oh. You ever think about like the mechanics of how a monocle actually works? Yeah. Like you look at it, there's prongs, there's like eye meat. Yeah. It's a whole, it's a visceral. It's a thing. Yeah. It's like you stick it under like the skull brow bone mm -hmm. to, to have the eye meat clamp down onto it. It's not classy. <laughs> no. No, it's really not. It's not delicate. Okay, I'm not a big, I think the five, it really, the wood dryness comes out on the end for me. And I don't, it gets really, like the wood takes over all of the grain and sweet honey and caramel nuts. Yeah, honestly, I think I would enjoy this whiskey a bit more at a higher proof. Um, neither one of us are a fan of the pine note, but that has more to offer than that, that pine note layer. And there's, I like the granola notes in American Drink whiskey. That. I like, uh, I like, um, you know, the tea notes. I, I like, you know, this, uh, this that was the bourbon, I think. Was right. that the bourbon? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, Whoa. Thing, the thing that was like recognizably bourbony was that dry cherry for me. Smell this. Okay. This is a two year old straight blended whiskey. Which means they took their other, like their two-year-old wheat, right? Two-year-old bourbon, two-year-old rye, p potentially, or and, and they blended them together into a blended whiskey that's all straight whiskeys. Comparatively, I'm not getting a big old pine note. Mm, it's in there. I said comparative. Yes, but it's a little more subdued, and I'm getting more of the wheat notes. Yeah, you know, I'm assuming wheat's in here because I'm getting that sort of like honeyed flower note. Mm. This one actually, the rye takes over the palate. When you take a sip, that's when you get all of that shop dust and oil. Now hold on. I am 100 miles away from walking me through this. The shop dust and oil? Yeah, the oil and wicker and kind of like the rice herbal notes came through to me. See, on the taste. I, I recognize the biggest thing that I'm, I'm getting from the taste of this is it's a 80 proof whiskey. Mm. It took it down to 40%. But I'm not getting any of that. I'm getting more like just your your sweet classic whiskey whiskey uh, notes with like maybe a tiny bit of honey, um, like that wheat softness. Yeah, I would have called it like a really rye dominant bourbon if I had to pick. Rye dominant, really? Yeah. Rye dominant. But I think in I the nose. There's a bit of an herbal quality, but I, I, yeah. know, I'm also getting a sweetness along with it. Yeah, I think that's the wheat. All right. I'm just guessing. I don't actually know what the mash bill is to that. Mm. Okay, we're going to go straight to the straight wheat whiskey, five years old. What I'm interested to see is do any of these five year old whiskeys that we're trying from them still maintain the subtlety versus the wood taking over. And I'm not totally sure, but we'll see. Oh, and you know what? You know what I get on the nose of that? A Canadian vanilla. Mm. Yeah, the pine is gone on this one. It's gone. Now I'm in Canadian vanilla territory on the nose. Yeah, like a weirdly floral van vanilla yeah. cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's like um, some sweet light caramel underneath that. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's a oh, that's peppermint. Sweet, sweet and friendly on Take the nose. Take a sip and it ends like a candy, a peppermint candy. Peppermint hard candy. That's weird. Oh. That's my favorite so far. Yeah. It's still, it's got to be 40%. Mm-hmm. Tastes like it's 40%. Yeah. But. Oh, wait. If you. Is yeah. it not? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I was, I was looking at the bottle blown away if that wasn't yeah, 80 yeah, yeah. proof. No. Um, but the 
combination of like a, like a Canadian vanilla, like a creaminess, a light caramel, and then mm. there's like a like a peppermint layer. Right. And that's the layer that stays with me the longest. That's the thing that carries me into the finish. That's interesting. Yeah. I like it actually. It's not bad. Okay, I don't know what this Teen Elk thing is, but I guess it's a special bottling for support. It's a blended whiskey, two years in American oak. We're gonna try that next. Ah, maybe. Ah, there we go. Man, you weren't kidding about first impressions back to back. Yeah. Wham, 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 wham. No, we got six, five to go through here, or six on us. Okay, so. All right, all right. Ooh, the pine's back. They really need time. Now tell it turns out their distillery needs time to get that rid of that note. So explain. So in my experience, yeah. I don't know this for a fact, but in my experience, when I get this like sort of sappy pine note, mm -hmm. uh, like evergreen. Like tree sap. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, it usually means the barrel staves that made up the barrels were either not yard aged long enough or were not yard aged at all and were kiln dried, um, which is sort of a shortcut to aging. And it's, for some reason, it always affects the whiskey. So Not for some reason, obviously, it always affects the, the whiskey. The different aging techniques are obvious. It's right mm -hmm. in the name. Yard aged, you're just leaving it outside yeah. for the elements to do their thing for. And you usually a, want a, at least a year. At least a year. And a kiln, they're just like putting it into a kiln, yeah. superheating it. And just, yeah, they're sure. not toasting or burning it, they're right. just drying it, right? So, but still, it seems that you can't rush the aging of oak staves the same way you can't rush the aging of so whiskey. I'm, I'm curious as to get into, I mean, that could be an interesting episode, the difference between, the difference in aging, barrel aging techniques, like the mm -hmm. wood aging yeah. techniques, because the barrel is made at the cooperage, mm -hmm. but the wood, you're talking about the, before the wood is even turned into staves. No, they, well, are you talking about just like the raw wood is yard age? At what point are they doing like yard or kiln? I don't know. So I've seen two different ways that like the uh, I've seen is... staves already cut and then aged, and then I've seen like the wood that's going to be used in everything being aged. See, I would love to do this episode on our other channel. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how or who to talk to. Yeah, where we would go. Well, we could go to it's ISC two different. It's easily, two different techniques. Yeah, yeah. that would be an interesting, fun episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can taste it. It's simple, kind of sweet, and a little bit yeah, evergreen. This is, uh, whatever you just poured in here, is the simplest by far. Mm -hmm. It's just um, a little bit of... It's their blended, two-year-old blended. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the simplest, and the like. The, it's almost like a simple syrup sweetness. Simple <laughs> syrup sweetness. A little bit of like a sap note mm -hmm. in there, and then proof down to 40%. Um, not, not something I enjoy. There's other things in this lineup that I've enjoyed quite a bit more. Yeah. Based on what I'm, we've tried so far, this is the one I'm most excited about because it is a seven-year-old corn whiskey. Oh yeah, so corn whiskey is on the face of it. Mm -hmm. So you say, oh, that's pretty boring, it's just corn. But, man. There's a whole lot of other options. So many. It's gotta be at least 80% corn. Yeah. You can use used or uncharred oak barrels. Yep. And uh, son of a bitch, if that doesn't create all kinds of interesting subtleties. So if that's the case, these guys had barrels that maybe those first pine notes are bled out of them. They're used, maybe, and then they're sitting for seven months. Oh, that's right, I gave you water, not whiskey. Uh, then they're sitting for seven months, years, right. in that barrel. Yeah. Look how light that is, even for seven years. Now, we did an exploration with corn whiskey over at Iron Root, which, yeah. you know, they, they do deep dives into different kind of corn whiskey experimentation. And what was, like, really, really surprising about that experience um, was whenever we're, we're in the barrel house, or we're talking about the samples and techniques, and they explained the difference between this whiskey and this whiskey. It's a 5% difference in the mash bill. Of corn, yeah. Totally different whiskey. Yep. Totally different whiskey. So in the world of just corn, just that one grain, there's a giant spectrum of like possibilities. And uh, yeah, corn whiskey, I wish it was named something different because it sounds boring. Yeah, because like, oh, corn syrup. Yeah, corn but there's so many yeah. different varietals of corn. There's so many different ways that... Um, Keep in mind that most of your grain whiskey coming from Scotland and Ireland is corn whiskey. Most people don't realize that. Most, well, hold on a second. Wait a minute. Did you just blow my mind? 
most of the most, most of the grain column distilled spirits in Scotland and Ireland that are going through the grain column. Okay. Are corn? They're using corn. It's corn because it's cheaper. It's corn whiskey. It's corn whiskey. It's high distilled corn whiskey. Of course. How? Of course. Just like Canada, a same does a similar thing. Yeah, because it's the cheapest grain. I really never really thought about it. Huh. A whole new world, <laughs> a new fantastic my, my, point of view. My my favorite part of that song is. Don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> yeah, don't you dare. <laughs> All right. Uh, this, so, is, this is a more present nose. It's yeah. Like, it's more body, more character. I'm more... still finding that slightly buried evergreen, but it's way the hell back there. Honestly, I think we're, we're basically, I think we're looking for it at this point. Uh, I don't, I'm not finding I disagree. it. Uh, but the, <laughs> but age, the age on this, you can you can at least smell. I haven't tasted mm -hmm. it yet. You can smell that age, that maturity, that depth, the richness to the oh, flavors. That flavor profile way better than anything that we've tried so far. It's simpler, but I like it better. The grain is not front and front facing. It's it's a lot more of the wood uh, caramelization. There's, there's two and, and a half the, notes for me. Mm. There is, and then the finish is just mm. like a generic, like a generic whiskey sweetness. Right. But it starts with. All right, I'm gonna pin down the first one because I got the second note locked in. Okay. okay, I've got my two notes in my head too. Okay, um, a little bit of an overly sugared granola, mm -hmm. shifting into a cherry, and then shifting into like just a generic, simple sweetness. Like okay, so I've got instead of the cherry wood tan. You got wood tannin? I've got a sort of a granola sweet vanilla cream switching gears into wood tannin. Mm. Once again, I wish it wasn't proof to 40. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think. because some whiskeys, you can actually take really low and mm. damn, they hold up amazingly well. Yeah. This one, you, if you're a whiskey nerd, if you're a whiskey enthusiast and you've been around the block with cast strength and 100 proof and blah, 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 you can tell that this wants to give you more, but it can't. Yep. At a 40% ABV. Now, Monday, Monday starts us turning on the ads for the channel. Huh? Monday starts oh. us turning on the ads okay. for the channel. <sighs> is this the last time we have to explain? This is the last time we'll do a full length explanation. Full length explanation. Okay. From now on, what we'll say is if you want to know why we're doing this, go book back look, to the week look, of look, October. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, you and I, yeah. because you know, we've intentionally, consciously, Left that monetization money. Right. Like, look, this exists because people's generosity. Right. We wouldn't have been doing this channel for the past two years mm -hmm. if people weren't sending in bottles. We right. just had a plan to do like, oh, these several hundred bottles we already have. Let's yeah. do that, and then we're done. Yep. But uh, I think one of the things that we really like doing was not putting ads on the channel because this exists because of you guys. Right. But at this point, the nonprofit five hundred one c three. Um, educational institution that this channel belongs to. It doesn't belong right. to me and Daniel. No. That school is still in hibernation mode for reasons. Yeah. yeah. And the board of directors was totally fine with this just being an outreach to the community yeah. on behalf of Wizard Academy and the Whiskey Marketing School. Yeah. But at this point, there's a whole bunch of side eye of like, hey, we do have people to pay. Right. There's, and in there's like classes. There's yeah. not revenue coming in. We're looking at the only thing that's not in hibernation mode is this, this channel. Yeah. And we were looking at the numbers and basically if we turn on monetization, it's enough to pay for the salary of one employee. And we figured that you guys would, would agree that it's more important to get annoyed by skippable ads on this channel than it would be to put yet another person in this country in the unemployment line. Yes. So we hope you agree. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be flipping that on. Which, and in the meantime, dun 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 wait, wait. It's out of order. Dun 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 dun. We need the. Where's your phone? What? Dun dun dun. I gotta have a heads up. Dun dun. There's a. It's a fault. Dun 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 dun. I think we're we're on. We did get we did get rain. Tyler died. Tyler died. Here we go. Maybe that's part of it too. Maybe I freak you out by tickling your face. That's just like the Balchinians. That makes me feel uncomfortable. No, that's definitely part of the official ceremony. No. I tickled Daniel's no, beard. No, 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 no. That's off the table. In the comments. No. Yay or no. nay? On Why? the tickling of that's the beard. That's so trolling. Yay or nay? No.
Here's they don't to fighting, have to live with it. Here's to fighting steel. I'm not even touching you. It's not you. My beard is part of me. It's not you. All right. <laughs> Here's to fighting steel. We can drink. If, <laughs> you fight me, and fight for a friend. Steel, may you steal a lever side. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us.